Okay, so today at the, again, I will be um, uh, going through the MANOVA in SPSS trial using the p-value approach. Uh, the data that I have gathered is from the internet, uh, so I will be using um, repeated measures uh, analysis of variance or the MANOVA on the task 7 um, for advanced statistics subject under Munger's yeah, So. Uh, the, the table that I have prepared under here in advanced statistics um, uh, in advanced statistics is I will be presenting it now so I'll be showing you the entire um, with, uh, lesson today so I will be um, showing you that I have here the table here um, this is in um, SPSS so we have here the lighting conditions for and these are the values for the reading times of the five subjects so we have five subjects here and we have the lighting conditions here for um, which is um, differentiated by the values 200 500 1000 and 1500 lighting conditions so the um, topic uh, the the experiment that I will be running for um, MANOVA is the reading times by e-reader device and the lighting conditions. So this, were, this has five respondents and we have four different lighting conditions. So that's a total of uh, 20 obs uh, observed values that we have. So we have also um, the hypothesis, uh, our Null hypothesis will be that the means of the four treatments are actually equal and that the alternative hypothesis that we have is uh, is that one or more of the means of the treatments are not equal or not the same for all of the four statements. So we have um, checking for the assumptions using the p-value approach. So um, we will first check for the dependent variables, whether or not the um, five um, subjects uh, the values for them are uh, which is in reading times in um, seconds are on continuous levels this one so the values that we have uh, the we've gotten from the um, five uh, subjects are actually on continuous level so this is on continuous level interval ratio so we have also um, independent variables um, that are the four treatments of the lighting conditions which are categorical these are categorical but they are related. So unlike ANOVA, so um, ANOVA has independent um, uh, treatments, but for this one, we have related or matched pairs. So this is um, all five uh, subjects will be uh, under four treatments. Well, um, they will also rate for the four treatments. At the um at different periods, so this will be 200, 500, 1000, 1500. So the reading times is in seconds, and this is the amount of light that they uh, will be adjusting in the e-reader that they will be using. So to set the analysis for hypothesis testing, we will set the level of significance at five percent. The test that will be using um, repeated measures ANOVA, the analysis of variance. So. Um, or the MANOVA, so uh, because there are four related treatments performed on five subjects. And the decision tool will be to reject the null hypothesis if the p value in the MANOVA table will be less than um, 0 0.05, or otherwise, we will have to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Next is we have to check whether or not we have significant outliers. So, for, to check for this, we will be analyzing the sets of observed values and run them to get the z-score. So for the z-scores, um, we can get them by running uh, the uh, uh, descriptives here, which is descriptive statistics going into descriptives. Then we'll, we'll be moving all our dependent variables into the variable box. Then after that one, we will be um, checking for the save standardized values as variables. Then after that, we click OK. So after clicking OK, we'll, we'll be getting this table, which is the descriptive statistics, which is um, reported here. So from this table above, we will we learn that the number of the subjects is 5 for each uh, 
which is the same all throughout and these are the same subjects which will be under different lighting conditions and that the minimum value for this one is 1155.96 and the maximum for this lighting condition is 1797 which is um as we go the um up the lighting condition we notice that that, that the minimum and the, the minimum value goes down and the maximum value is fair, uh, also going down so the mean also goes down the same and uh, but the um, standard deviation isn't dif different because this is um, about the spread of the values um, in the um, distribution uh, in the um, uh, when they are arranged in a histogram or a bar graph so that's the spread this one so this uh the larger spread is this one the uh the one the uh, 1500 lighting condition and the lowest spread is at 500 uh, lighting condition so that's our uh lower spread of values so this is um our uh, values so this, uh, if um, we should take note also that since the highest mean is at um, 200 lighting conditions, so that means that the number of subjects, uh, uh, th this means that this one can um, be our basis for the analysis in post hoc. So if we get a uh, uh, decision, uh, if we follow the decision rule and get a rejection on the null hypothesis. Next is we will be perform, um, get um, analyzing the, the z-scores. So since the z-scores here does not have a positive and um, does not exceed positive or negative three, so that means we have no significant outliers for this um, uh, data set. So that means we can proceed to another um, assumption, which is the test for normality using the Shapiro wheel and so for this one, we will be running again, like um, we will be generating it again using analyze, then click for descriptive um, statistics, then explore. Under explore, all the variables, uh, dependent variables will be placed here. Notice this one, the dependent list. And we will be um, checking for plots. Then we will be checking this one, the normality plots with tests. Then we will um, click continue. Then, okay. Okay, so for this one, we generate the Shapiro Wilk um, table. So um, the test for normality, this one. So this is our test for normality, which we see here. So this is our Kolmogorov, Smirnov, and Shapiro Wilk. Uh, we noticed that this uh, these values, which is this one and this one, are actually um, uh, greater than um, greater than 0 0.05 uh, p value. So except for the 1,500 lighting condition, this one um, 0.031, which is um, less than 0 0.05. So um, except for that one, the data is normally distributed. So this one uh, from 200 to 1000 lighting condition, that means our data is um, um, spread out evenly. So next, the last test that we will be checking for is for the uh, test for sphericity uh, using the much least test. So this test actually checks for the variant or oh, whether or not the variances of the differences between the combinations of related groups are equal so they we will be checking for it uh, and generating for it using the much least test so the much least test can be generated um, via the general linear model under analyze so we have under analyzed we have the repeated measures so under repeated measures we have the rename so we will be renaming it to lighting conditions because these are the lighting conditions here and we will be uh, select uh, inputting the number four because we have four levels of lighting conditions. So um, after that, we will add it, click add to get it here into this box and click define. So after um, clicking define, you will have to move all your um, dependent variables into this uh, within subjects variables here in this box. 
then you will have to click for plots. Then you will have to highlight the factors and transfer it into the horizontal axis. After um, uh, transferring it to the horizontal axis, click add. So this will be added here in the plots in this box. Then after that, click continue. After continue, um, after continue, you will have to um, check for uh, go to options. So you will have to under display, you will have to check for descriptive statistics. So under descriptive statistics, after that, you will have to click continue, then press OK. So this one here, we will see that um, under the much list test of sphericity, um, we have here the significant value of uh, 0 0.857, which is bigger than the p-value of uh, 0 0.05. So that means the uh, the difference between the means is um, um, actually um, okay. So that means the there is homogeneity of the variances. So that means there is homogeneity of variances, and that means we can proceed to the last one, which is um, analyzing for uh, for the decision rule. So the decision rule is actually um, here. Okay. Just remember that um, if the number is greater than 0 0.05, then that means there is homogeneity of variances. So this is this number, this value is actually greater than, so there is homogeneity and variances. So let's go here. So this test here can be seen at this part, which is here, the effects. So in the effects, you will have the um, degree of um, free, degrees of freedom, which is um, for the um, lighting conditions, which is three, which, uh, which is your factor, the dependent variable, and the um, error um, computation is for 12. So you have 3 and 12, which you will have to um, report here, this one, um, for the F-computed value, which is this one. The F-computed value can be seen here, which is, this is the only part which is um, reported as the ANOVA table. The test of within subjects effects is actually the ANOVA table for MANOVA. So this is MANOVA. Uh, this is the only row that will be reported in another row that will be reported. So this is the F computed value 2.156, which is greater than 0 0.05. But remember that uh, our decision rule earlier, we've set it to less than uh, 0 0.05. So that means the test has failed to reject the null hypothesis. So that means for this one, we have failed to reject the null hypothesis um, since the value um, uh, two point uh, f computed value is two point one five six is greater than um, the um, value that we have set. So, um, so we fail to reject it, then that means our conclusion is that there is no statistically significant difference between the four treatments of the lighting conditions and the reading times of the subjects. So that's it. So this is the uh, how you will compute use uh, um, in MANOVA using SPSS trial. So um, I will be going uh, the last topic that I will be discussing uh, late uh, after this one will be multiple regression analysis, which is on a separate video. Okay. So I will be ending this video now and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye.